Covering the corruption is no longer enough. We have to change the system. Deception is the currency used uh, on Capitol Hill. Welcome, friends, to the Wiki World Order Report, collaboratively reporting on the peaceful replacement of the corporate industrial complex. This is episode 7, Clean Elections Fight Corporate Erections. Video and audio downloads, as well as transcripts with detailed documentation and research along theaters can be found for free online at wikiworldorder.com. I'm your host, Morgan Lesko. A lot of people feel like their votes are not worth anything anymore and opt out of participating in that part of democracy. Now, we can use non-participation against trinket capitalism to help defund the corporate industrial complex or really send a message via mass strikes. And I do think we need to outgrow our kleptocracy to replace it with a new decentralized system. But I also strongly believe that we, while we plan for our future, we must simultaneously steer the present. I think we must maximize our participation in the community and political process in hopes of reclaiming it. It is the only way to change how our government spends its big money funding the status quo while supposedly working on our behalf. If and when we, opt, we outgrow our current government, whatever system we replace it with will hopefully embody the principles which we establish and fight for right now within the current governing paradigm. Reclaiming democratic freedom is far from included in your taxes. It takes real effort and real people power. It means informing yourself on important issues from many perspectives. Voting in every election you can and unelecting legislator, legislators who don't represent you. Frequently lobbying your elected representatives and even organizing groups in your community. No matter what system of human relationship rules your land, is it not your duty to help ensure it hears each of our voices? There is a concept largely associated with the military-industrial complex known as the Iron Triangle. It describes the trading of economic and human resources between interest groups and the government to perpetuate, to perpetuate and continually expand the industry. This technique is not just used by the military, but is replicated by many different industries. I argue that one of the primary starting points for these endless cycles is the electoral support in the form of campaign contributions. So if we target this part of the formula, perhaps we will finally be able to make progress in pushing some of these industries back. I've learned in 20 years of experience as an activist that the U.S. House and Senate, and therefore our country, move extremely slow on most issues. The biggest corporate interests sponsor candidates on both sides of the aisle, with some industries supporting red a little bit more than blue, but both sides of the duopoly are generally corrupt and co-opted. There are a few brilliant exceptions, of course, but they are vastly outnumbered. Many citizens have fought for decades trying to fix issues which are no-brainers when faced with the facts, so we don't even get to the point of discussing the underlying problem problems of crony capitalism running our system. I want to emphasize that we might have a chance at accomplishing these obvious steps and then the even more difficult steps by first cutting our legislative bodies free from their addiction to corporate purse strings. In addition to greatly helping out all activist efforts, this could also improve congressional oversight over the top secret parts of our government, thereby improving our oversight over those private parts. The U.S. Senate and House of Representatives are designed to most directly represent we the people. But members of Congress spend a great deal of their time trying to raise money for future or current campaigns, which could be spent legislating. These bodies have been perversely corrupted 
by trends like the over 12,000 registered lobbyists who spent over $3.5 billion in 2010. We see bills defeated and passed by politicians who are loyal to their purse strings over their values and sense of equality and justice, usually more concerned about doing what is right for their careers instead of their constituents. In late 2009, a public citizen report explained how, quote, between November 2008 and September 30, 2009, the financial industry has given $48.3 million in campaign contributions to members of Congress and their political action committees. The 94 members of the two finance committees have received $16.9 million overall. The top 10 committee recipients include the Democratic chairmen, Senator Chris Dodd and Representative Barney Frank, and the ranking Republicans on the committees, Senator Richard Shelby and Representative Spencer Bacchus, end quote. Also, according to the Center for Responsive Politics, OpenSecrets.org, Wall Street made up five of the top 20 contributors to Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign, and three of the top 10. His seventh largest was J.P. Morgan Chase, with $695,000. His sixth largest was Citigroup with $701,000. And his second largest was Government Sachs, I mean Goldman Sachs, with $994,000. Now here we are in 2011, and we still have not seen real fundamental reforms of the financial sector to fix the root causes of the financial crisis, which was predicted by many. And after breaking the economy towards the end of the Bush administration, Wall Street has now just broken its all-time compensation record, paying its employees a total of $135 billion in 2010. And un as unemployment stats remain consistently high, despite being manipulated. These systemic problems also dramatically worsened on January 21st, 2010, with the Supreme Court's landmark decision on Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. The 5-4 decision held that, quote, corporate funding of independent political broadcasts in candidate elections cannot be limited under the First Amendment, end quote. This has opened the floodgates even more for corporate millions to affect the outcomes of elections. The Sunlight Foundation calculated that this case has already enabled an extra $186 million to be spent in the 2010 election or 40% of the total spent by outside groups. In Justice Stevens' dissent, he wrote, quote, The court's ruling threatens to undermine the integrity of elected institutions across the nation. The path it has taken to reach its outcome will, I fear, do damage to this institution, end quote. Some propose a constitutional amendment to counteract this decision, which may in fact be worth all the effort it will require. Even if such an effort were unsuccessful, it may help rally the grassroots support needed to pressure for national reform through other legislative routes. According to a recent ABC News Washington Post poll, quote, 80% of Americans likewise oppose the ruling, including 65% who strongly oppose it, an unusually high intensity of sentiment, end quote. Even without the Citizens United case, the standard behavior inside the Beltway disgusts me. Like corporations, too many politicians follow their bottom lines, which generally translate to the needs of their biggest corporate sponsors. It is one thing to make compromises while bills are being crafted and written, but the way politicians trade votes on various unrelated legislation seems backwards to me. Why wouldn't our representatives vote on a bill-by-bill -bill basis based on whether a bill is wise and just? Why would we want our representatives to vote for bills any differently than their actual positions on the given issue? The political capital that trumps all in my book is voting and leading from the heart, backed by the facts. That is perhaps the best we can ask of any politician. What do clean elections look like? One of the secrets in all aspects of life is to envision the swish before making the shot. There are many different types of reforms promoted, so I'll do my best to provide a quick roadmap of the more popular paths towards various levels of reform. While I focus here on the national level, most of these issues are applicable at each state's level. Even though most state legislative bodies are also filled with corporate money, 
Fighting for campaign finance reform in indi- individual states is also required to make the whole country more representative of its citizens. Improvement set number one. Adding sunlight. Transparency. A. Require groups that spend heavily on elections to disclose their donors, like the Disclose Act, which passed the House but not the Senate in, in 2010. B. Require something like the top five donors of non-restricted funds to be listed on the screen at the end of a television advertisement. Improvement set number two, shifting voice volumes. A. Limit how much hard money can be directly given to political campaigns by political action committees and other corporate funded entities, including some kind of repeal of the Citizens United decision. B. Limit how much soft money can be given to political parties and or find better ways to enforce the laws. C. Give corporate shareholders greater say over how companies spend to influence elections. D. Prohibit foreign influence in federal elections and enforce it. E. Prohibit government contractors from making expenditures with respect to such elections. And F. Apply some kind of equal access formula for how legislators spend their time. For example, after a legislator plays a round of golf or spends an evening being wined and dined, this public servant would devote the same amount of time seeking out constituents who cannot afford even a part-time lobbyist. Reform model number one, matching funds. This method allows the candidate to raise funds from private donors, but provides matching funds for the first chunk of donations. For instance, the government might match the first $250 of every donation. This already exists in the presidential primary elections, but could be extended to the rest of the election process. Unfortunately, this existing presidential primary public financing is currently being challenged in Congress in a bill which has already passed the House. Reform model number two, voting with dollars. First part, Patriot dollars. Each voter would get maybe $50 voucher for Patriot dollars to give to various presidential and congressional candidates. Second part, anonymous donations. Donations to any campaign would be masked by the FEC, so candidates do not know for sure who donated. And reform model number three, clean elections, clean money. This would give each candidate who chooses to participate a certain set amount of money. In order to qualify for this money, the candidates must collect a specified number of signatures and small, usually $5, contributions. The candidates are not allowed to accept outside donations or to use their own personal money if they receive this public funding. Candidates receive matching funds up to a limit when they are outspent by privately funded candidates. Some form of clean elections have already existed in the states of Maine, Arizona, North Carolina, New Mexico, Vermont, Wisconsin, and Massachusetts, and in the cities of Portland, Oregon, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Though not all have survived. While I am not personally positive what model I think will work best if implemented, I do think we desperately need some serious, systemic reform of campaign financing, and I do like the clean elections, clean money model. If enacted, voters could also essentially boycott candidates who do not use public financing. Since this is such an important issue, there are many groups working on it, which you can check out. A few include the Sunlight Foundation, Common Cause, Public Campaign, Public Citizen and their Clean Up Washington campaign, and Democracy 21. So please sign up for national and local groups which focus on this issue to stay informed and take action when needed. Billionaires and mega corporations larger than most countries often donate a fraction of their profits to charities to help improve their image for public relations. But very rarely does that generosity counterbalance the vast damage and inequity caused by their profit maximizing over the years, decades, or centuries. Similarly, I feel we've reached a point where the vast majority of signed legislation benefits the corporate industrial complex, and the average citizen only gets a tiny charitable kickback in benefits for political public relations. Strengthening the citizen representation in Congress and state legislatures with fundamental campaign finance reform could be the most vital step in bringing back our beautiful republic to replace our current plutocracy. So please use your voice to its maximum potential in whatever way you are most creative and consider making clean elections one of the big issues in the 2012 elections. 
Thank you for listening and participating in the Wiki World Order.